right, let's go over your day one assignment on these discrete random variables. Let's see how you did. All right, so here we had our different students and the business statistics class. And so we were told about the grade distributions. Um, the A was a four point scale or the four point value and the G3 was a, a B is a three point and so on. So you did kind of have to be able to know that this was the A's, B's, C's, D's, and F's. Okay, and then they gave the percentages. So we just had those laid out for us there. So the question asks, is it discrete or continuous? Well, it is discrete because we had five possible outcomes, a countable finite amount of outcomes is why that ends up being discrete. Okay, now explain in words what being this X being greater than or equal to three means. Okay, and um, in context, what that means and what that then say what that probability is. Okay. So for pro probability of X being greater than or equal to three, that tells me that will be the proportion of students in this whatever online course, okay, at Indiana University, who got a B or higher. So that's what that's telling me, the proportion of these business statistics students who got a B or a higher, and then I just added those two percentages together. So 81.9% got a B or higher, okay? Write the event a student got a grade C or worse. So that's a two-point scale or worse. So you could say P probability that X is less than two. And so that's how you would do that notation. And then we've got this um, adding those two together. And then we have 4.3%. But you also could write it and it would be the same thing. Less than or equal to one. So, because it's worse than a C. So, that is these two sections, a D or an F. All right. Now, here we go. Next. A couple is going to have children until they get a girl. But they're going to not have more than three children. So, they'll stop by the time they get to three, even if all of them are boys. Okay. So, assuming that the boys and girls are equally likely... List all the possible ways that the student or the couple can have children. So, they're again, they're going to have children until they get a girl. So, here we go. Just like, bam, first child out is a girl, then they're done. Okay? All right. But what happens if they get a boy? Well, then they're going to keep trying. Well, and then if they got a girl, then they're done. And they had two children. Now, they could go a boy Got to keep going. A boy, got to keep going. And then they have the girl. Okay, so then they're done. All right. But you know what, though? They could have also had a boy, a boy, and then a boy. And remember, it says they, will, they won't have more than three children, even if all three are boys. So here are the possible outcomes. There's four different things that could happen with this couple's children. They could have one girl or one child two children, or three children. There's one fourth for each of those, but two ways that they could have three children, two out of four ways. So then you can do the probability distribution. You need to do the work. Remember we talked about in the notes about here's the mean, and then you got one times 0.25 plus two times 0.25 plus three times the 50%, and there's that. And then the standard deviation, okay, remember that if you have the table, you can just show the first in the sequence up to the third in the, the last in the sequence. And the formula goes X minus the mean quantity squared times the probability plus dot 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 plus X minus the mean quantity squared times its probability. And then I had put those in my calculator to get the answer. I didn't go over how to do that in your calculator, but it is in the notes. And it is, there's even a separate video if you have an older operating system, how to do that in your calculator. All right, next. Oh, this is a good one because this is a very simplistic version of what happens with an insurance company, but it kind of gives you an idea of how things work. So with an insurance company, the um, policy costs $100. So I, as a client, I will pay the insurance company $100. 
But if there is a, a major injury suffered, then the insurance company will pays out. Usually they're paying out around $10,000. If there's a minor injury, then they end up paying out about $3,000. Now, then they, you know, actuarial tables or, and so on would give these probabilities. So here's the probabilities. One out of every 2,000 policyholders. So in the long run, one out of every 2,000 they have is going to be major. And then one out of every 500 is going to be minor. So then the rest of them are going to be, you know, no injuries, okay? They won't have to pay out for they only take in that hundred dollars. So create a probability. Remember, we need to know the the um, the perspective, the company's profit or the insurance or the person's the the client's profit or what they're paying. So what's the company's profit? So here we go. Here are things that could happen. You either have the major injury or the minor injury or no injury. So there are the discrete three possible outcomes. So X is the company's profit. So here's how this works. To, if a major injury occurs, the insurance company takes in $100, but then has to pay out $10,000. So the comp insurance company is actually $9,900 out at a loss. If a minor injury occurs, they take in $100 from that client, but they have to pay out $3,000. So the insurance company is actually $2,900 at a loss. And then, but if there's no in injury, which is happening to a lot of peak clients, they take in that $100 and then they don't have to pay out for that person. So here were those probabilities we were told. One out of 2,000 for a major injury, one out of 500 for a minor injury. So what I did was I added those two together and then subtracted from one to figure out this probability. So 99.75% of the clients will have no injury and they will just be banking that $100. So based on this probability distribution, we can then see on average per client, what is this insurance company making on average per client, every client. So here we go. So there's the average, the negative 99 100 times how that happens, the negative 2,900 times how often that happens, and so on. So they are making $89, which doesn't seem like a lot, but $89 on average for every single client. So do they want more clients? Yes. Are they going to have cool commercials like the Geico ones? I like those, and I like the Liberty Mutual ones now. Those are really kind of funny. So do they put commercials out there on TV and so on and so forth so that they can have more clients? Yes, absolutely. So because they know on average, in the long run, they're banking $89 per client. All right, that's how it works. This is a simplistic version, um, and it's much more complicated because there's really much more variables, hence all the smart mathy people doing that stuff, but that's what's happening. Interpret in words what this means. For every policy holder, the company will make $89 on average. Ooh, you know what I didn't um, put in there and I should? I should have put, you know, in the long run. Or, you know, for many, I guess for every policy holder, I think for many, you know, for many, many policy holders, Okay, I don't want to forget that idea of in the long run. Okay, all right, next. Create this here. So we had two spinners. So here were the spinners, and then these red numbers are the sums that we get. See, one and one gave a sum of two, and so on. So those were the sums. So then we make a probability distribution table from this. So the possible outcomes, it's discrete, discrete, two, three, four, five, and six. And so how frequently do those happen? One out of the nine versus two out of the nine, sum of three, three out of the nine, sum of the four, and so on. And then from that, you can get your mean and your standard deviation. So you want to make sure that you're showing the proper work 
x minus the mean quantity squared times the probability plus dot 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 if you have the table then you can just do your sequence with the first and the last in the sequence all right and so that's what it comes out to be so there we go there is your assignment for your probability or discrete random variable probability distribution tables and i hope you did well on that